Throughout the history of gaming, there have been many iconic moments. There are triumphs of ingenuity, paragons of artistic expression, and then there are the disasters. Today, I want to focus on one disaster in particular, a disaster that I would loosely describe as the Hindenburg of gaming. The Hindenburg, for those that don't know, was a historic moment where the Hindenburg airship crashed and burned for the entire world to see. There are many theories as to why this catastrophe occurred, the most widely accepted being some sort of static spark igniting the gas which was used to lift the Zeppelin, but regardless of why it happened, the result was the complete collapse of an industry. Overnight, the Zeppelin business cratered, and since that monumental day, the world has completely abandoned dirigible technology. Whether it was exclusively a result of the Hindenburg crash, or a combination of many previous factors, I don't know. I'm admittedly no expert on the subject, but the moment was so supremely catastrophic, a disaster of such epic proportion, that it will most likely be remembered for centuries purely because of its failure. This brings us to Fallout 76, a game that will likely go down in gaming history because of its cataclysmic launch, its broken infrastructure, its subpar merchandise, and now, a forced recall from the Consumer Product Safety Commission for the Power Armor collectible helmets due to a risk of harmful mold exposure. Yes, this is real, not a joke, the third-party power armor made by Chronicle and sold through GameStop that are designed to be replica T-51B helmets carry the risk of mold exposure in the lining fabric, which can damage a customer's lungs. This is where some context is needed. First of all, the specific helmet selection affected by this problem were not manufactured by Bethesda themselves. The helmets were commissioned from a company called Chronicle LLC. And in a vacuum, if this were simply one instance of a third-party manufacturer doing shoddy work, I would probably not be advocating for an association of blame between them and the parent company who initiated the project. However, and this is a very big however, Fallout 76 is a veritable game of hopscotch from one merchandise failure to the next, and at a certain point one has to step back and evaluate the larger picture rather than simply assigning blame to the most immediate party responsible. It all began with the canvas bag. Unbeknownst to all of us, as regular drone consumers, the world had undergone a canvas plague that wiped out the reserves, at least that's what Bethesda employees tried to claim. While relatively high quality bags were handed out to streamers and YouTubers and journalists at conventions, nylon bags, more akin to a hefty garbage sack, were given to premium paying customers who ordered the deluxe game edition. This didn't go very well. The response? Let's give them 500 atoms as compensation. That came directly from Bethesda. About $5 of real world value that could only be spent inside the Fallout 76 atomic shop, and couldn't even purchase a canvas bag there either. This led to lawsuits, widespread outrage, and eventually Bethesda caved. The nylon bags would be replaced, but in order to do so, you had to fill out a form. A form, so it turns out, that would dox your personal information. This sent another wave of backlash through the community, but they were just getting started at this point. Right alongside this was the Nuka Dark Rum, a product advertised alongside prominent glassware imagery, but in reality was a late-shipped subpar plastic casing that felt like a straight-up scam more than an actual product. This bottle was not produced in-house by Bethesda, it was in fact a third-party provider that they had chosen to provide value to their consumers, and it was a very bad choice. Going still further, Bethesda very quickly after launch began selling leather jackets for a hefty sum of money. Their shop is positively laden with merchandise, while the game itself struggles to recover from the launch day burnout. Bethesda by itself is not producing these items. There is no secondary location where Bethesda actually manufactures merchandise in-house with the subsequent machinery and apparatus to do so. Rather, instead, they hire third-party companies for each given project, and therein lies the problem. For the canvas bag, somewhere between concept, advertising, and final version, the fundamental materials were changed and customers were not notified. For the Nuka Dark Rum, the advertising and product marketing did not match the final version and could be argued as intentionally misleading at this point. And now, most egregious of all, the helmets produced by Chronicle contain harmful mold resulting in the forced recall of around 20,000 units. These types of issues are no small thing. In fact, in a lot of circumstances, a health issue such as this is not even discovered or acted upon until it has seriously harmed one or even many individuals. In fact, it is so serious that the advice is to immediately stop using the collectible entirely, and GameStop will be directly contacting all customers to notify them. This is not simply a case of refunds being made available, but the product is just discontinued. They are actively seeking at company expense to retrieve the helmets because there is a legitimate health risk which opens them up to serious liability. 
Fallout 76 is the Hindenburg of gaming, not so much in the sense that it felled the entire industry, that would be decidedly untrue to say, and also not in the sense of rapid explosion, but from the standpoint of name recognition alone, there is no other game in recent memory that sticks in the mind quite like Fallout 76 for the singular reason of absolute controversy and failure. Some might argue that Anthem is the true winner in this category, and perhaps there is an argument to be made, I guess. Anthem had the added hope of being a fresh IP, boundless possibilities and the anticipation for what gamers desperately desired to be a fresh perspective on the looter genre. These expectations were dashed in spectacular fashion, but even still, Fallout 76 is a titan of continuing scandal that is setting itself up to be the undisputed king for, well, honestly, perhaps forever. Focusing on the merchandise, there are already three different instances of severe customer distaste as a result of arguable false advertising. If we broaden our horizons, the developers lied flat out when it came to their monetization goals, with an adamant promise that there would be no microtransactions affecting gameplay, and now there are multiple that beyond any shadow of a doubt augment gameplay progression. The focus for the game was on surrounding systems. There was an emphasis on marketing, an emphasis on merchandise, but there was not enough focus on the game itself, and the results may very well have been a detrimental blow to the Fallout franchise as a whole, and even to Bethesda's future flagship productions as well. I know many players who are rethinking their interest and support for Starfield or The Elder Scrolls VI, and though I do believe there is a somewhat well-defined gap between genre fans, and generally speaking Fallout fans may have been burned but Elder Scrolls fans will still likely check out the next franchise installation, the possibility cannot be ignored that so much damage has been done by the iconoclastic effect of Fallout 76 that surrounding franchises may suffer. Let me frame it this way now. Bethesda has chosen on multiple separate occasions subpar contractors for their merchandise. When the digital deluxe edition for Elder Scrolls 6 comes knocking, which it inevitably will, and one of the featured items is, let's say for the sake of example here, a helmet, or something even remotely similar, how many of the hardcore fans will have either bought or known someone who bought a Fallout 76 collectible T-51 helmet that might have contained toxic mold, which was subsequently force recalled for safety reasons? When sourcing work to third-party vendors, there is a process of checks and balances that needs to take place. As an example, when sourcing merchandise for Upper Echelon, I always order some of the product beforehand to check quality. Even then, there have been issues. I should really be doing much more thorough checks and also much more frequent checks, since there have indeed been some issues that transpired regarding timing and quality back a number of months. Things have been fixed now, and I'm very happy with our partnerships at the moment, but had I been extremely thorough and much more rigorous with my checking, those problems could have been avoided. This level of responsibility increases with volume and especially with cost. Deluxe editions of games or expensive collectibles for hundreds of dollars, where tens of thousands of units are being bought, require a very serious level of accountability and clearly, beyond any dispute, Bethesda is either unwilling or unable to effectively police the production and reliability of these third-party vendors. When the focus for a game or a franchise noticeably shifts away from the product itself and begins to revolve around additional collectibles, knickknacks, shirts, jackets, and whatever else that can be pumped out for quick sales, it should immediately throw up a red flag. People often ask me why I hate certain games so much. Chief among them, Fallout 76, and also Anthem. Those are the two that people ask me the most about. The answer is that I don't hate what the game is, I hate the process by which it got here. I don't hate the idea of a multiplayer Fallout open world. I'm not over the moon about it either, I guess, but it, it isn't something to despise by default. Instead, I hate the focus on digital deluxe editions or merchandise. Not just that, but the focus on shoddy, low-quality merchandise that takes far longer to ship than it should have, while also under-delivering on what was advertised, or now, in this particular case, being a literal health hazard. I hate the idea that a developer can lie about their future intentions, and then just cram in the exact same mechanics they swore up and down would never be added or contained. And what I hate most of all is that even with such a high-profile failure like Fallout 76, the industry will most likely still find a way to push it under the rug when the next cash grab opportunity comes along. I am not advocating for a blind boycott of all future games. To me, that is simply a self-deprivation of things that might actually be good or enjoyable, but learning through past experience is necessary when it comes to corporate integrity. If Bethesda says we are not going to add X or Y or Z to this game or that game, we quite simply cannot believe them. Their word now means less than nothing. When Bethesda commissions merchandise and special collector's items, we quite simply cannot trust that they are even safe to buy. And whether or not future Bethesda published games 
games end up being high or low quality, relatively speaking, is a bit of a separate topic, but I felt it was important to highlight what has, in my opinion, now been cemented as gaming's greatest failure possibly ever. That's it for today. I want to cover the Activision situation with Call of Duty Modern Warfare and the troubling exclusivity of modes, whatever's going on with that, but that'll probably not be done until tomorrow. There are links down below to support, Twitter, Patreon, etc. Typical YouTuber things, but I'll cut it there and stop rambling. As always, thank you all for watching and have a nice night.